Hey Dumplings, it's Dave Decide. Today we have spotted V at a meat shop and there's some little murmurs on what's going on there. We also have to talk about RM and what he has going on. And of course, some people are saying that Blackpink concerts are not doing well and the girls are not selling. Of course, I have thoughts on that. So, hater or not, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. Grab your Dumplings, hey Spilling Mug merch, and let's get into it. Blackpink has recently been doing their promotion for their new album. The album reception has been pretty good, but to be 100% honest, I think even if it wasn't that good, the reception would still be good just because Blinks have been waiting 84 years. If Jenny just made eyelash sounds on a track, it would be number one. And I think for these reasons, a lot of people were looking for reasons to tear down the group. Is it hard to believe that someone got to where they are because of hard work? There are things that play into success as an idol, like being really attractive or the fact that the majority of the members are fluent in English, but these are still a much smaller part of the overall success. While a lot of people feel like YG's choreography and songs are not that good, you can pretty clearly tell that the girls are very talented way outside the music that they make. And the promotion of Blackpink is a very Western style of promotion. They promoted the members in the US as celebrities before singers, having them model, having them attend events and network with other celebrities. They began to appear in other celebrity photos as friends at parties like Paris Hilton's party or Jane and Smith's party. Paparazzi took photos of them at dinners and they just became a hot topic among celebrities who would soon mention the girls during interviews because they were all hanging out together. All of this has nothing to do with music but ensured their success once they did drop something and solidified their place in Hollywood as celebrities. And if you break it down like this, you can definitely see how they managed to do so well with their comeback. People were taking moments from recent concerts to say that Blackpink is not as as popular as they were expecting in America, saying that you could see empty seats during their show, claiming that their music was not popular and no one was buying tickets. I find this hard to believe as Shutdown and Pink Venom both did extremely well numbers. You don't get those numbers and then drop tickets and it's crickets. But also I am not entirely sure if these people are purposely trying to make something up to attack Blackpink or if they honestly believe that Blackpink didn't sell tickets. I really want to meet one of these people and shake them. Like, are you okay? The logic that they used to claim that no tickets was being sold was that during a performance where a fan cam was posting a focus on Lisa, you could see some empty seats in the back. Now, how concerts work, if you are unaware, is they'll have a stage with a big screen and the screen is an obvious part of their set design. And then the artist dances and sings in front of that screen. It's extremely difficult to build a set that is 360 and can be seen from all angles. So the stage is usually pushed all the way back as far as they can and they'll sell all of that space in front of the stage. So the area on the ground and then every seat that would still be in front of the screen. Meaning they can't physically sell any ticket that is behind the screen. You simply wouldn't see anything and that's just a terrible seat. You can even see right where the line of the screen is in the focus video. That is where the audience cuts off. But okay, let's say you've never been into a concert before, you don't know how this arrangement is or that you assume concerts are 360. You can very clearly see that there are no people, not even one, in that area. If this ticket sales was a problem, you'd see people spread out. There'd be gaps, small groups of people in one area and then a little gap and then more people. It would never be entirely no people. Other theories that Blackpink allegedly didn't sell was that the ticket prices were both too high given how many songs they actually have. I think if you add up all the songs Blackpink has, it's around 32. Like that's their entire discography. And their current album has like eight songs. So I can even understand why people would think that there would be less interest, but no, I think the girls would sell out even if it was just them on stage talking about their day. We often don't know what is going on behind the scenes, yet it seems to be that every day people just make a decision in their head and just run with it. If something seems so matter of fact and bad, I would urge you to hold off on reposting or retweeting, let it play out, read more and try to understand everything. More often than not, the thing that is quote unquote bad is just a misunderstanding. And to give that person or group so much hate is just so mean when it's just a misunderstanding. I think this happens to BTS a lot as well and the members definitely get a fair share of their unwarranted hate, but it is all a part of doing the work that they do. Big hater 
players also result in big supporters. Arm is not a stranger to that idea and he knows and even feels indebted to all the armies that have shown love and support. During a Rolling Stone shoot with Pharrell and RM, they both sat down and had a conversation and posted that. I will summarize some of the main points. RM talked about knowing and acknowledging ARMY's effort in trying to get BTS where they are now. And also the effort that goes into ARMY buy-in concert tickets, how hard it is, and how far some ARMYs will travel, book hotels, etc. just to see BTS live. RM talks about how he feels like he has to repay them by giving them the best show of their life. I love this way of thinking. It's a very common Asian way of thinking. If someone does something for you, you are indebted to this person for life. Brotherhood is a big part of Asian culture, and if you do a favor for someone, they beyond appreciate it, even if they don't verbally say it. You can definitely imagine the amount of pressure he must feel if he is taking on that thought process. Aram also talked about how the album is almost done. It is predicted to drop on the 25th, so there's a lot that is about to happen. Is it just me or do these comebacks cycles seem to be getting shorter and shorter for each artist? I feel like J-Hope's comeback was only like a month. But I am very excited to see what RM's sound will be. RM talked about something we did not know about, which was his first ever performance when he was just a kid. There was an audience of like 10 people and he had written a song but totally forgot the lyrics. He mentioned how he felt maybe songwriting was his thing but not performing and that maybe he'd be a behind the scenes person writing songs for big artists. Arm talked about this, he still gets very nervous when performing from moments where he is just getting on a flight to fly over to perform to backstage and then even the first few songs he might do at a concert. Arm said, I really get nervous and really sometimes get depressed, but I even get swallowed by all the energies. But I am trying. I am trying to deal with it because I am human. I love the music. I love their love. I think love is really happening when we give it to somebody, not when we take. Sad to hear that he gets depressed over over it, but I can understand. It's extremely overwhelming knowing how many people rely on BTS and not just for a living, but for happiness too. But you just can't think of all that. It's just too much for one person to deal with. Since the members have gone and done their own thing, there have been a lot of speculation on what each member has constantly been up to. V was recently actually spotted allegedly at a meat shop. I believe this could have been like a Korean barbecue place. He ended up leaving his signature there and a lot of people were excited as it seemed like V had a great time there. I do honestly believe that the members would not leave a signature if the food was bad because they know by leaving their signature it would be placed outside or on the window of their shop and people will give it a try just because V was there. And so if the food is bad then they're just going to blame V for his recommendation even though V didn't technically recommend it. Others were a bit upset that the meat shop owner even decided to post this saying that he was using this for clout and that the shop was using V, which is silly. I think it can also show that they're just proud and they got the opportunity to serve a superstar. Others were wondering who he was with and if it was a date or if he went alone. Of course, with the recent dating rumors, people do think he was on a date and they were hoping that V wasn't bothered on said date. But likely he was with his friends, some of the many friends that he has, like the Wuga Squad or BTS members. If you do want to watch me react to In The Soup Friendcation, as well as the In The Soup BTS members version, then go over to Patreon. We always have such a fun time over there. All three seasons have been reacted to over there. I will link it in the description. So no, I don't think V was doing anything private. And fears of if it was the staff bothering V because they asked for an autograph is not a concern. They likely asked when he left, and usually shop owners are going to be super polite as they don't want the idol to not do it. And if V noticed that the shop owners were snapping pictures, or invading his privacy, V would have likely left. So I am happy for V going out of his way to have a little fun and enjoying his time off. How do you feel about RM being depressed sometimes, black pink ticket situation, and do you think V was being stalked at a meat shop? Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out my Patreon for more videos. Link down below. Thanks for this lovely comment right here. Love you. Bye.